Okay. Alright, I've got a VU popped up. That's good. Chat's popped up. That's good too. Um, let me just make sure that this is going okay. I think so, but a lot of stuff is frozen on my computer. Okay, so there's four people. That's good. That's great. Hi. Um, so my name is Lara Backer. I am going to be doing fluids experiments today on my phone because my computer couldn't sync up to Facebook Live. So uh, I'm just going to wait for a few more minutes while like maybe people filter on. Um, I guess that's a pun because you have filters and fluids. Uh, but I've got all my stuff here ready. Okay. I can't do it like that. Okay, that is not in there. But I've got all my experimental stuff ready to go. Um, and I guess I will tell you guys a bit of background about myself. Um, so, my name is Laura Backer. I got a PhD in fluids from Cornell University um, last year. And uh, I grew up in Michigan, so there's that connection with the planetarium right there. Um, so I guess the first question is, what is a fluid? I've got a glass of water right here. We all know water is a fluid. Um, basically, a fluid is anything that deforms to fit in the container that you want it to fit into. Um, and it can be deformed based on the forces that it feels, so like shear right now to the bottom of this glass because gravity is acting on it. So yeah, basically a fluid can deform, so you can have gas as a fluid because it deforms to fit the rooms you're in, etc. Um, and the reason why this is linked up with the planetarium is because stars like our sun are made out of gases like uh, plasma, which is really highly ionized gas, um, and those are fluids. Then um, our planet's atmosphere and other planets' atmospheres are fluids. Um, and then fluid dynamics can also help us understand um, planet and star formation, which is really cool. Um, so a lot of, or there are some people in astrophysics who just study fluids. Um, so we're going to be doing some fluids experiments here. And if anyone has any questions, then just post them in the chat and I'll try and answer them as they pop up. Um, I guess one other thing to note is that if you're working on designing spaceships too, you have to worry about fluid dynamics because you have to worry um, about the atmosphere as the spaceship's going through it. You also have to worry about, in the rocket engines, combustion happening. And combustion is basically chemistry that's happening in fluids. So that's very cool um, and super related to the planetarium. So, all right, let's get on to the experiments. So first I'm gonna do the walking water experiment. Um, what you're going to need are paper towels, then uh, some cups. I've got little tiny plastic cups. Um, and then you're going to need some food coloring, like this, and water, which I've got over in my sink. So I'm going to set my phone up. Uh, let's see, where am I going to set my phone up? Okay, I'm going to set my phone up right here. And... Uh, then I've got my cups, which I'm going to put down here. Okay, you can see them. Cups. Got a few. I'm going to fill each of them with water, and then I'm going to fill each of them with a different color of food coloring. Let's see. So, um, I'm going to go do that, and then you guys can do that. And we'll get back here when we have cups full of food coloring and water. One thing is you do want to fill your cups pretty high with water. Um, because if they're too low, you're not going to have enough water um, to wick up into your paper towel. Um, so that is one thing. You want to fill it up a bit higher on your cups. Go. 
Alright, so I've got all four cups of water now. And I'm going to add the food coloring. Just so that we can see what's going on a bit better. Um, pretty cool. Alright, I'm going to put blue and green. And then yellow. And red. Then I'm going to mix them up. You can like mix them up with a spoon or a fork. I have a bunch of Q-tips, so I'm going to mix them up with some of my Q-tips just to kind of distribute the color a little bit better. So you've got all your cups with your color in them. And now what we want to do is we're going to take our paper towels and you can tear them into strips. Um, they can be folded over like this, however you want. So I'm going to tear them into strips just so they can fit into my cup. And I'm going to put them in the cup like this so that they're all the way down. I'm going to push the cups together just so that there isn't too far that the water has to travel. Because the farther it has to travel, the longer this experiment will take, basically. Um, so depending, also depending on how absorbent your paper towels are, if they're super absorbent, it'll happen really quickly. Um, and <laughs> oh, that's funny. Um, so yeah, if if uh, if your paper towels are super absorbent, it'll happen super quickly. The water will flow up the paper towels, um, and if they're less absorbent, it'll happen less quickly. Uh, one way to make it happen faster is just to fill the glasses up higher to get more absorbent paper towels. Um, you can try also wetting your paper towels beforehand so that um, there's already water in them. And basically the science behind what's going on here is that you've got all these things called capillary forces um, and those are what as the water is like being pulled up onto the surface, the capillary force is um, trying to keep the water on, uh, on the surface. And water adheres to water um, pretty well. So you get all of these um, colors of water being pulled up into the paper towel just because of how absorbent it is. Um, and eventually, if you leave this here for long enough, then you can get the colors mixing into the different containers because the water walks over the paper towel, um, mixes, and, uh, and you can get some really cool color combinations. So that's why I think this experiment is cool, but like I said, um, it can take a while just depending on um, how absorbent your paper towels are, how high up you fill the waters. So I'm going to leave these off to the side, um, but you can already see kind of the, uh, can you see it? Okay, let's see, I'm going to see. Let me see. Okay, we can already kind of see on the paper towels the water is walking up somewhat. Um, so yeah, and that's just based on the capillary adhesive forces um, with the water in itself. So that was a fun experiment. Um, I kind of structured this so that the experiments would get cooler and cooler as we went. So hopefully we have a lot to look forward to. Um, the second experiment is something that probably you guys know um, relatively well. It's uh, the rainbow column, and you might have had to do that this in school, um, or maybe this is your first exposure to it, who knows. So what we're going to need is some kind of a glass or clear jar that you can just see through. Um, it doesn't have to be glass, but it's nice if it is. Um, then what we're going to do is we're going to add a bit of dish detergent to it um, and you want to add enough so that you can really see a layer there and if you're like me and unfortunately have the same color dish detergent as you have of oil then you might want to color the dish detergent a different color so I'm going to color mine with a bit of red food coloring because I didn't think ahead when I was buying my dish detergent. So I'm just going to make this dish, dish detergent red really quickly. Come 
Alright, it's getting there. Okay, so we've got our dish detergent. It's red. Then we're going to get our oil. And unfortunately my phone is balanced on the oil, so we're going to do some moving here. Okay, so now we've got our oil, and we're going to add this um, as another layer onto the dish detergent. And we're going to add it and add it. And we can see almost instantly that the oil and the dish detergent are separated. And they're separated because they're non-miscible fluids. Basically that means that they don't mix together well. But which one comes to the top is going to be based on the density of the fluid. So more dense fluids will sink to the bottom and less dense fluids will rise to the top. And the reason that um, more dense fluids sink to the bottom is basically because there's more mass for a given um, amount of area, the force of gravity pulls down on them. So that's why the heavier uh, or the more massive, more dense fluids go down. It's because of gravity. So if you were like in space, the fluids would be floating everywhere. The heavier one wouldn't necessarily sink. But here we've got our dish detergent and our oil. And our dish detergent clearly has a higher density than oil does because it sank. And something cool that you can do is you can add in like uh, Legos or beads or different things like that, pennies, and see where they end up in these layers um, because that'll give you an idea of how dense those little pieces of plastic or metal might be, um, which layer they end up in. So we've got two layers, and then what we can do is we can take water and add a third layer. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to make my water blue just so we can see a difference. So I got blue water right here. And I'm going to pour it on top. And we see that the water went under the oil. So that means water is more dense than oil, but less dense than the dish soap. And the reason why I did it in this order was because if I had poured the water directly into the dish soap, they're miscible. So they would have mixed and foamed and stuff. So by pouring it on top of the oil, I didn't mix it quite so much and were able to see these layers. Um, and so something fun you can do is if you want to keep the rainbow going, you can have corn syrup or honey or rubbing alcohol or other types of fluids and add them in even more layers so you get a full rainbow spectrum of uh, different density fluids. So you can see um, which fluids are more or less dense and you can see uh, whether they're missable, whether they mix or not. So that's a cool experiment right here, the rainbow column. And no matter which way I go, they're always, they're always the same just because of their densities. Um, so that's really cool. Something, something that I like to think about um, with this is that in like planets like gas planets or other types of planets, um, the atmosphere, um, the amount of gas in the atmosphere might vary based on their density. So you might get uh, more dense gases down below and less dense gases up above. So this can kind of be a representation of um, the atmosphere of a planet, for instance. So, there we go. Alright, that was our second experiment. Um, so yeah, if you wanted to continue this experiment, you could try different fluids. You could try adding pennies and other stuff to it, um, just to see what happens. That's what, that's what the fun part about science is, right? What happens. Um, okay, so for this next experiment, we're going to do something called the rising water experiment. Um, what unit of measurement do I use for density? Um, so I guess one question is unit of measurement. Um, so density is mass divided by volume. So it depends on which system of units you're going with. Um, I'll usually use kilograms per meter cubed because kilogram is a mass and meters um, cubed is a volume. But 
Um, if you use other types of units, like imperial units, then you can get um, different names for density, like slugs per feet cubed and stuff like that. So you can get you can get really wild with uh, with your densities there. Um, all right, so next experiment I'm going to do is um, the rising water experiment. For this, we're going to need a plate or like a shallow bowl, um, just to make seeing it a bit easier. Then we're going to need to get water um, and a candle. I've got a tea candle here and a lighter. And so if you have kids, be careful um, about who gets to wield the lighter. And then I've got a little glass jar. Um, you can use a cup, a glass cup or something like that too. Anything works. So um, I'm going to put some water into this, uh, this plate um, and just kind of like fill it up so that it doesn't like flow over but so that there's a bit of water on here. So I'm going to go do that. Okay. All right. I'm not sure you can see, but if we look down, there's a bit of water in here. Uh, maybe I will color it just so that we can see what's going on a bit better. So I'll color it red. Huh. Okay. Color in our water. All right. So now I'm going to put the tea candle on top of the water. Uh, okay, I think everyone can see, but if you can't see, then let me know. So I'm putting the tea candle on top of the water, um, and then I'm going to light the candle. If, okay, that's good. All right, so we've got a lit candle right here. Um, I'm just, I'm going to respond to one question really quickly, but... We've got our water, we've got our lit candle, I will be right back. Uh. Okay, so we've got, uh, yeah, get a grown-up to help with the candle. So we've got our water, we've got our candle, um, and you're gonna wanna watch this really closely because it happens really fast. So we're gonna cover the candle with this glass container, and if everything goes well, let's see. Okay, so what happened is, almost immediately the candle went out I don't know if we can see this, but the candle went out and then the water rose up to be this high, whereas the rest of the water is still down here. The water up here rose this high and it rose up basically right when the candle went out. Um, that was pretty crazy. It happened really fast. Uh, you might want to do it again, but be careful removing this because the water level is really high. Okay. So let's watch it again. I'm gonna light the candle and then put this on top. And the candle is on, um, it's lit. And all of a sudden the water starts to rise, the candle goes out, the water keeps rising and now it's up this high, which is crazy. Um, so, why does that happen? Because, you know, with gravity, you think it would all want to be about equal, right? Um, so one thing is, is basically the air inside the container is heated from the candle, right? And so this hot air is expanding um, while the candle is lit. Um, some of the candle might like, or some of the air, because it's expanding, might escape. Um, and right about when that's happening, um, the air inside here is expanding and the water is escape or the air is escaping a bit so it's all level but as soon as the candle goes out um, the air cools off super quickly um, that and then it 
comes back together, it contracts, and it, because it contracts, the pressure in here um, reduces and it sucks the water up. So basically, um, this is an illustration of something called the ideal gas law, where the pressure, the volume, and the temperature, um, and basically the amount of a gas are all related. So because the temperature changed when the candle went out, um, the gas got sucked up. And there's a few other things that contribute to it too, like as we're burning the candle, um, we're going through this chemical reaction where we have um, the fuel and oxygen produces water and carbon dioxide. So we are producing water by burning this candle. Um, so there is a bit of condensation from the candle. Um, and so there's just a few different effects that are happening all at once that make the water suck up and behave like how we wouldn't expect it to. Um, but it's really cool because it can all be predicted basically by this one ideal gas law equation. Um, and that equation and the chemistry that's going on is basically like what's happening in uh, reactors, like in rocket engines, um, or in, uh, yeah, in reactions that happen like in the sun, etc. So, so yeah, so this is, this is a cool experiment that I really like to do, um, just because it doesn't, what happens isn't what I would necessarily expect it to, but once you think about it, once you use the equations, then you're like, oh, that makes sense. Um, so yeah, so then we're, next we're going to do something called magic milk. I've got a bowl. I'm going to fill it with a layer of milk. It doesn't have to be super high, just a bit of milk to cover the bottom. Oh, thanks. Um, so I'm just going to get a bit of milk, cover the bottom. Um, then I've got a bunch of these uh, food coloring bits. And I'm going to have a Q-tip where you can just use your finger. And some dish soap. So I'm going to have to rotate my camera holder again. <laughs> Okay, so I'm gonna get the milk and fill this container up. I love doing these experiments. Yeah, if you've got a picture of you experimenting along, if you wanted to try some different fluids in your, uh, in your rainbow column or something like that, then that's great. Okay, so I've got my milk is in there. And now what I'm going to do, uh, hey Michelle, hey Aubrey, uh, thanks for experimenting with me, this is kind of fun. Um, Alright, so I've got my milk in here. We're going to do something called magic milk. And so I've got these food coloring, and I'm just going to add, you see, yeah, okay, I'm just going to add a drop here and there of food coloring, so I'm going to add like two drops of yellow, then I'm going to add like a few drops of red, a few drops of like blue. Um, I'm not going to cover the whole thing of milk, I'm going to try and keep the drops kind of far apart. But we're going to basically paint pictures in our milk with this food coloring. All right. So you can see we've got we've got what kind of looks like an artist's easel in our milk. Let's look at it again. Alright. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my Q-tip and I'm gonna get some dish soap on it. And get some dish soap on the Q-tip. You just cover the whole head of the Q-tip in dish soap, or you can use your finger if you need to. Um, if you don't have food coloring, you can also like put pepper on the surface of your milk or something. It just has to be, it's just some, nice to have something where you can see what's going to happen. So I've got my dish soap on my Q-tip and let's watch what happens. Ah, whoops, okay. Okay. Whoa. Look at that. I'm basically painting a picture with my Q-tip. I'm just touching it really lightly and the milk is flowing. 
You see that? I think it's super pretty. And then based on the colors that you choose, um, you'll get different pictures. But here we go. This is my magic milk. Um, if you've got, if you're doing this, definitely share your pictures because you can get some really pretty designs on your milk just from doing this. Um, so I guess you're wondering why does this happen? Um, what's going on here? And uh, basically what happens is milk is mostly water, right? But it also contains vitamins and minerals and proteins um, and tiny droplets of fat that are suspended in the water. That's what makes it milk. Um, and these fats and proteins are really sensitive to what's going on with, uh, with the water that's holding it. Um, and so the secret of these colors bursting is that little tiny bit of soap. Um, basically, because of that fat, um, milk is a non-polar molecule. Um, so when soap is mixed in, um, the non-polar part of the milk um, break up and uh, they kind of dance around the surface of the milk. Um, so all of, all of these molecules like bounce around to join up with other nonpolar molecules and they're trying to like get away from the dish detergent. Um, and as the soap gets more evenly mixed, it, the action will slow down, it'll eventually stop. Um, and one question is, uh, what kind of milk do you think would um, be best for this experiment? And uh, so just think about that for a second. Uh, and the answer is um, higher fat content milk. So the more fat you've got, the more fat molecules will try to run away from the dish detergent and join up with each other. Um, and so the reason why I did this experiment is because it's an example of uh, suspension. So particles or droplets or other things can be suspended in fluid. You can have things in fluids um, and really fluids can be described by uh, a ton of different things. So you could have like dust in fluids that you're concerned about. You could, um, you could have a bunch of different multi-phase flows like that. And uh, so one of my friends did uh, a study on, what was it? It was uh, helicopter blades and like dust suspended in air. So here we've got fat molecules suspended in milk that make these pictures for us. So, there we go. Um, and now we're on to our last, I think it's our last, yeah, our last experiment, hopefully the coolest one. Um, so what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to get a, another uh, glass jar or cup or something like that. Um, I guess here, we've got glass jar right here, and so uh, what am I going to do? I am going to add a little bit of water, like maybe a quarter of it, um, and then I'm going to color that water with food coloring. So I'm going to go get water. Let's see, what color are we going to do? I'll do green. There hasn't been a lot of love for green yet. You can mix your colors. You can make like purple out of uh, red and blue. You can make orange out of red and yellow. You can do whatever you want to. So I've got my green water. And then I'm going to add oil. Got my oil back out here. <laughs> All right, so we got green water, and then we're gonna add a bunch of oil. If you remember from before, water and oil aren't miscible, so they don't mix. So we get all kinds of these bubbles, um, but the oil's gonna be, the oil's less dense, so it's up here, the water is more dense, so it's down here, and they're not really mixing, right? Yeah, okay. So then what we're going to do is uh, we're going to grab an Alka-Seltzer tablet 
right here. And we're gonna basically make our own lava lamp. So we can break the Alka Seltzer tablet up. I'm gonna just use a quarter of it um, because I don't want it to like explode everywhere on me, but maybe you could use more once you make sure that uh, it's pretty good. So we're gonna drop that in. All right, and you can see the Alka-Seltzer tablet is kind of bubbling, right? And as it's bubbling, it's sending up the green droplets of water that we have in here. Here, we're gonna turn it because the bubble's mostly happening. And basically, we're making our own lava lamp. We've got, I guess it could have added in more Alka-Seltzer. Yeah, so we've got all these bubbles. They're coming up to the surface. In the center, we can see that they're coming down again. Uh, oh wow, it's really going. Oh yeah. So if you look at the surface, there's all kinds of tiny bubbles. And then we've got some bubbles going down from gravity. Uh, and then we've got the bubbles being pushed up from the Alka-Seltzer. Uh, it's so cool, yeah. Yeah, so basically we just made our own in-home lava lamp although it will go out because the Alka-Seltzer will get all used up. Um, so what's happening here? Um, basically a lava lamp works based on density, like the oil and the water, and it also works um, on the miscibility, so the oil and the water aren't mixed together, and that's how we get these droplets coming up and going down and nothing really mixes together. Um, and what happens in um, and this is that we used Alka-Seltzer to power, power the lamp. So the Alka-Seltzer is reacting with the water, and so it's producing these carbon dioxide gas bubbles. And the gas bubbles are pushing the water up, um, because they're basically helping buoy it up to the surface. Um, and fighting against that, that, uh, the oil, and fighting against the fact that water is more dense than oil is. Um, so the Alka-Seltzer is buoying up the water with these gas bubbles that are uh, sticking to the water droplets and uh, so at the top the gas bubbles pop and then the water sinks back down um, that, and that's basically what's going on and in a real lava lamp we don't have Alka-Seltzer tablets right you're not like continuously dropping an Alka-Seltzer tablet into your lava lamp all the time um, but in a real lava lamp the, uh, the more dense liquid also sinks to the bottom, you got the less dense liquid on top. Um, and basically what happens is the lava lamp heats up the more dense liquid and makes it uh, less dense and so it rises to the surface. So you've got heat basically doing the same thing to push the more dense liquid up to the top. Um, and then as it gets farther from the light, that heated liquid, the one that's being pushed up, cools down and then it sinks again. Um, so yeah, we've just, we've just kind of done a little lava lamp demo right here. So this is kind of similar. We've got carbon, these carbon dioxide bubbles. Carbon dioxide's um, in our atmosphere. It's what we breathe out. Um, and then we've got these density differences too. So that's kind of like... Uh, what we've got in planetary atmospheres and stuff like that. I love I love this experiment, so I'm just gonna add another whole Alka Seltzer tablet. See what happens. We're gonna go crazy here. Alright. Yep, lots of bubbles. This is wild. Okay, so we saved the best for last here. Um and you can see there's all kinds of like turbulence, the bubbles are going crazy, there's all kinds of vortex structures, um, and uh, basically we've got a lot of different fluid dynamics flows. I'm actually, I'm working on a project right now that's kind of similar to this for my job, so I get to, I get to do this, um, I, get, I don't get to play with this, but I get to figure out how fast bubbles will go up to the surface or other things like that, um, so, so yeah, so, uh, so you can do stuff like this for science, like for your whole life, or for your whole job too, um, and that's really fun. Alright, um, I think this was it for the experiments, but if you have any questions 
or um, or suggestions or if you want to like try other stuff like add more things to the rainbow density column or um, or oh man there's so many things to try uh, yeah so if so yeah if you got any questions um, or anything then uh, feel free to post them and thanks for joining me today I hope you had fun. <laughs>